Can I just say the office is looking great? <laughs> well, the wire's I've gone. got progress. <laughs> no, it hasn't. It's the way I've adjusted my laptop. So oh, okay. it's actually really clear in here, which it makes you feel so good. I've got a little pile of stuff going on here, but I'm getting there with it. Like everything's like, we've cleared it all out. It's starting to look a lot better. I mean, it's still why I'm waiting for my light fitting still and obviously like accessories, my blinds, but it's looking cleaner and clearer, which is good. It looks really nice. And also, I mean, obviously... Still I just, the Peloton. Yeah, I was going to say, the Peloton's still in. <laughs> Everything else looks really clear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, how are you from Dubai? Still in Dubai? Still in Dubai. Do, um, do I look a bit more tanned this time? Because... You do, yeah. You look really tanned. Because I kind of give up with hiding away from the sun. So I'm still wearing my factor. Because for those that might have missed last week or not caught up... I had a Cosmolan pill for my pigmentation. Anyway, there was like, stay out the sun, wear a hat, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's just, that's just not the life for me. When I'm on holiday, I love the sun on my face. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but it's so, nice to get a healthy glow. Isn't it? And so if the first week I did, and I did keep out of it and was going in and out a little bit. But this last week, I've just thought, you know what, as long as I'm not in it all day long and I've got my factor on. So I just thought I needed a bit of a tan. So I feel like I've got more of a glow now. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you definitely have. You look really tanned. That's so how's good. it been? Really good. How's the kids? The kids are great. They're having such a lovely time. And it's funny, actually, I've just left them all downstairs at the swimming pool. We're all playing, like, you know those, those like, fish float things that you throw into the water and they collect them? Yeah. We were just playing that and I was like, oh, mummy's got to go. Um, oh. uh, I'm afraid not. Is that okay? I'm just recording a podcast. Maybe later. Is that okay? Okay, later. Yes, please. Thank you so much. So it's just housekeeping. He's got the Hoover. And he was like, can I Hoover? And I was like, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I've come up to the room. Um, yeah, so we were just playing that. And also, I think I told you last week, we have the access here to the water park. And no, oh, I'm not even kidding. Love... What is that? The Atlantis water park? Yeah, so it's it's not... It's, it's actually... Yeah, it's the Atlantis Water Park. So you can, you can join it from the original Atlantis, but you can also join it from the Atlantis Royal, where we are. You just walk through oh, straight really? in. Oh, my God, that's amazing. My two love it there. Well, it's amazing, but also exhausting. We've been there every single day. Have you? Every day, yeah. Well, cause, because you can just walk there. You can go and do a couple of slides and then come back. So it's not too bad. But um, it's funny because yesterday we... Paul was like, please, 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 can we go on the... There's a slide called Zoomerango, and it's this... Oh, fa- I know. Yeah. I've been on it. Right, so it's the, the family the big, one. The big round thing. That's it. So you all oh, sit in my... it, and it's that massive drop, and then it swings back up again. No. Did you go on it? Well, it's now their favourite slide, so I'm on it like five times a day at the oh. moment, like a lunatic running around the water park. Isn't it hilarious? <laughs> Do you know what? The first time um, me and Greg took the kids, it was actually last Easter when we went on that and we went on that ride we didn't really know what it was going to be so we all get on it like and we're in the round thing yeah and oh my god we it did drops. not expect because it goes it drops but then it goes up really high doesn't really it and it high. drops again <laughs> yes and Nelly and Arthur's face well they were they was like in shock you know like they couldn't believe because we didn't know it was going to be either but it's such a brilliant ride isn't it so this is what happened to us the first time we went on it Rosie didn't want to go on it. It was like, okay, fair enough. Paul was like, yeah, yeah, I want to go on it. Bless him. He cried the whole way down. So as soon as we, <laughs> when we got on it, then he was crying. Then we got off and he was still sort of whimpering for about 20 minutes. And I said to Paul, I don't know, that was a good idea. Talk about like, like scare the scare kids. Scare the kids. Yeah. At a water park. Anyway, the following day we went back and he was like, I really want to go on that ride again. And I was like, oh, do you? And I was thinking that's good. So at least he kind of, be- but now it's become like every single day. Yeah, three, four times a day, and, and it's funny because I'm glad he's beat his fear. But yeah, it, exactly. every, but the thing is, every time you go on it, it still gets you. Like every time you, oh yeah, dip over that and go down that massive big drop. But um, the kids are loving it, so that's fine. But I, I'm like, oh, here we oh, go again. Oh, brilliant! I literally said to them just then, I was like, right, mum, he's going to do podcast with auntie, and then because I was going, please can we go water park? Please, can we go? I went, okay podcast and then we'll go and do water park for an hour but you say an hour you end up being there two and a half hours because it's so big yeah course. so and, big and and is it busy there still as well it's quietened down a lot so last week when we first got to the hotel it was quite busy but not like so you couldn't get a sunbed you know like just busier 
and then it's yeah. really quiet down. And then actually this weekend it's Eid out here, so it's a huge celebration. So the hotel is apparently is going to be at full capacity as from tomorrow. So I, th- I think it's going to be busy this oh, weekend. Wow. Um, but um, yeah, it's lovely. And actually, you know what? Speaking of like Ramadan and Eid, they let off this cannon every night here. The other night I was I was on the balcony shooting <laughs> content for Invisalign, and I was like. <laughs> And yeah, talking about my teeth and giving an update, this cannon went off and it and it, le- it literally echoes through the, it feels like through the whole of Dubai. That's how big it is. Oh my God. And I, <laughs> I, I jumped out of my skin, dropped my phone. Could you imagine if I dropped it over the balcony? Like oh I, my I, thank God. Thank God I've got one of those pop it things on the back of my phone at that. My hand was yeah. locked into that. Otherwise I'd have dropped my phone over the balcony and it like could have, I don't know what could have happened. Oh my God. But anyway. That's really bad. It's really bad. Um, but no, it's lovely. We're having a really good time and we come home Sunday. So we've got these last few days left and I feel like, I know we've been here for a while, but we're really bedded in now. You know, you just sort of have your routine. You, like, you, you really just... get into the swing of things, yeah. You do, don't you? And it's, it's lovely. We was, um, obviously, when we was, in the, we was in the Maldives for 10 days. So yeah. when it got to like day eight, obviously like the first five days we filmed. Yeah. And then when it got to like day eight and you know, when you start thinking about, oh, we've got to go home, we've got to go home. So we was like, we would love to have extended, but we couldn't because of we've course. got so much going on here yeah. back at home. But um, we was the same. We said it does take sometimes like a good... Like over a week, doesn't it, to get in like or when you get you like into the swing of things, you get your routine like yeah. we me, Mum and Greg were saying like like, Oh, we know like what to do at what times a day now and we we really had like a good little routine going on on the island. Yeah. And then obviously we had to go and I was like, Oh, I wish we could have done a bit longer but we just couldn't. We just had to no, get and that's home. I think that's what's lovely about a holiday. It's like you you know when you get home, you've got your kids in school, you've got your routine, you've got work, and that's that is normality, that's reality, and that's why when you do have your holiday, you really look forward to them because it's just that oh, break completely. from all of it, isn't it? Well, usually on when we go away, usually for me, the last two days of holiday, I go in back into work mode. I start mm-hmm. like replying to emails, I start speaking to everyone again and sorting things out. But actually, this time. Is probably one of the first holidays I didn't. I said to Greg, no, I don't feel ready to go home. And I think it probably was because we did film for the first five days. It actually yeah. only felt like we had a five-day holiday, carefree, like nothing, no commitments, no work, yeah. nothing. So I feel like, for me, this, yeah, this, but obviously now we're home. Like I said to Greg last night, it is lovely being back in your home, kids back in routine, like they've gone back to school today. Um, oh, have they? Was they? All happy. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got back, we got back on, when did we travel back? We traveled back Monday. Oh, yeah. that was a long journey. So yeah, tell 22 me. hours from like tra- 22 hours of traveling. Oh my God. It was, no, it was intense. So how was Margot? It, to be, Margot was a dream. To be I fair, think, yeah. all, all, of, all three of the kids, they, they were so good. Like considering it was such a long journey, like there's a, we had a few ups and downs on the plane, you know, usual. Yeah. Um, Arthur had a bit of a tummy ache on the plane coming home, so me and him was like back and forth in the toilet. But he was, yeah, he was, um, he was constipated and um, he was like getting really angry. So we was in the, you know what it's like in them stinky little toilets on the plane. Mm -hmm. He was like screaming, shouting, crying, and I was getting so embarrassed because you could the whole plane could hear him. But I thought everyone's gonna fit. I'm in there, like yeah, like like, tell him, yeah, tell him I'm like. I was, like, oh, the fuck, I was like, calm down. I was like, every time I was walking out, when I mean I must have been in that toilet probably 15 times on the plane, everyone was just like looking at me, like straight face, you know, like when everyone looks up. But um, oh, so that was no. quite tough. But in terms of like overall behaviour, Margot, they were so good. I was really lucky. But I had a nightmare. So we get on the plane. So going out there, I had the bassinet for Margot. You know, like yeah. obviously you get a bassinet when you've got a young baby. I get on the plane and going out there is great because where the bassinets are as well, you know, you get the leg room, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's the front seat. So you know, like with a baby, yeah, front seats. Yes, yeah. so you know, like with a baby, you got all the stuff, and you're uh-huh. always in and out the baby back. Like Margot pooed on the flight probably five times. <laughs> like, <laughs> so anyway, so we get on the flight. They was like, really sorry, the bassinets broke. One bassinet on the flight oh, broke. What? I went right. I was like, so it's not good enough though. I is it? They're sure they should there, have right? backups. Exactly. Such I was like, I can still flight. sit there though, no. They was like, no, we've had to put someone else here with um that's booked leg room. I was like, but that was my seat. 
right? So you can you imagine I had to hold Margot in my arms for 12 hours. Obviously, mum and Greg helped as well. Well, Greg helped for about an hour. Mum, me and mum done it a lot more together. So imagine like, I thought, no, please don't do this to me. You know, like when you think she's she's at the age now, she's yeah. like nearly five months. She doesn't want to be restricted in my arms for 12 hours. But we had no choice. There was literally no choice. Like, so I this- was so... I was like, well, is there anything else you can do? Is there any other seats? It was like, computer says no, basically. You know what it's well, like? And I just This thought, actually happens to us. Do you know what? It's, isn't it a joke? I can't believe there's one bassinet on one bassinet on a flight. Like, obviously, you've got more bassinets in, like, other classes. But in economy, one bassinet. Well, they should have just got you one, because I'm sure there wasn't multiple babies on the flight. There might have been, but they should always have spares, surely. If you book a seat like, oh. with a baby, they should always have enough bassinets for the babies. So this happened to us coming out here to Dubai. Obviously, our flight's not as long, but it's still like six and a half hours, you seven hours. You just need somewhere to lay them, don't you? We didn't have a bassinet well. at all. And I know that Ed, and Ed would think about it, he's 11 months and he's heavy. Oh, yeah, and heavy, he's, and yeah. He's, he, again, poor Naya to hold Edward the whole flight because the bassinet seat was taken and you know we we was like well I've requested the bassinet seat I understand that that particular seat might be taken but it was a couple like two people um that had had those four seats with no baby and I was like well can you I just can't can can, can, we, can we swap us please because obviously you can see I've got a baby here that's 11 months old that's going to want to lay out and sleep and we had exactly the same issue she wouldn't move us and I was like but we have a baby no way I was like we surely the baby the baby comes over leg room, unless and, unless you're Completely. like really elderly or something. I, I, maybe, maybe I'd get it, but these were just a couple that must have been in their thirties or forties. Like it was, it was bad, and we had to hold him the whole flight. Honestly, our backs because he's heavy. Like you've got to think he's oh. big. Um, but anyway, yeah, it is a nightmare, right. and I do think that they should all sort that. And also, like you know. A lot of flights still don't give you your pram when you get off the plane. Like, we didn't have our pram when we got off the plane, so we had to slap through Dubai Airport holding him. And even in the baboose thing, that, like, baby carrier thing, it's still really heavy, and it's a long way to go to get to passport control. It was like, this baby's so heavy. It's so far. (laughs) Did I tell you that my pram got lost when I landed in Mali? Did I tell you that? Did it? Oh. No. Oh, my God. I forgot to tell you. When we flew, when we flew out there, got to Mali, waiting all the luggage coming through. I just had this really bad feeling. I thought I haven't seen my pram. Yeah. You know, like the oversized lug- luggage comes through somewhere. I was like, Same. I haven't seen my pram. Anyway, the prams, they're like the prams not here. I was like, no, 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 no. I've got a four month old baby. I can't just nip to the shops. We're in Mali. We're going to be on an island. I need my pram. I was freaking out literally. Like, oh, no. I was just. You can imagine because I was thinking Margot was really hot. You know yeah. how hot it is when you land there as well. Anyway, we're like, talk- and what happened was, as we got on our flight in the UK, I put my pram and I said to the air hostess, if I leave my pram here, it's definitely going to get on the flight, right? I said, because I remember years ago it happened, they didn't, my pram didn't turn up um, yeah. in Mali either when Nelly Yeah, was you baby. just like say goodbye to the pram, don't you? And it's like, is someone going to collect it? And you sort is of someone like, going to collect yeah, it? Yeah, I sort of, I've looked back at ours before thinking, please get on the flight. <laughs> please get, yeah, I know. And um Anyway, so it went on, we was about an hour, but now we're rushing because we need to get on our connecting flight. Yeah. I was like, this is going to be a nightmare. This is going to, how can I, how, you know, like a four month old baby, how can you get them from A to B on an island in the sun without being in a pram? Anyway, we were standing there back and forth. They found it. They found the pram. God knows what happened, but thank God they found my pram on the plane somewhere and they oh bought it to me and I was like... Oh, you know, you just feel yeah, like, oh my realistically, God. Realistically, you wouldn't have had a pram the whole holiday because you wouldn't have been able to no. find, you can't buy a pram in Mali. Well, luckily, straight away we rung the island when we thought we wasn't going to have one and they actually had a pram there. They was like, oh, it's fine, we've got pram. So thank God they actually oh, had one, but well. still, but which was like a godsend. But you yeah. know when you just want your own pram for the baby? Yeah, of course. But anyway, that was a drama, that was a drama, but anyway... podcast is brought to you by Dykeman, where you can find big brand trainers from Nike, Adidas and Puma at the best price. I think it's safe to say that we both love trainers. I actually don't think I wear anything else at the minute. 
I know, me too. Because you can even dress up a nice pair of fresh trainers. I do that all the time. I recently actually wore like a trouser suit with a white t-shirt and a pair of trainers. It looked lovely. I love that. I do think with a pair of brand new trainers, it can just make an outfit, can't it? Absolutely. So you guys, we have something very exciting to tell you about. Dykeman offers quality footwear at affordable prices. So much so that if you find an identical pair of shoes elsewhere, Dykeman will price match and give you an additional £1 back. And if you think that's great, Dykeman are also offering a buy one, get one half price offer on all Feel and Sketcher trainers from the 27th of March to the 30th of April. Oh, that's exciting. You can get a nice fresh pair for spring. Yeah, that would be great. And the offers don't stop there. Dykeman are giving a 10% discount exclusively to the Sam and Billy Show podcast listeners with code Sam and Billy 10. So that's a 10% discount with the code Sam and Billy 10, valid until the end of April. Also, make sure you check out the episode description for the links and offers. Enjoy! say your hair looks lovely because you haven't posted about your short hair no and i've had so many dms because i you don't posted before i went i done a teaser saying i'd had it cut and um i got so many people dm me saying we still haven't seen your hair and when i was wearing holiday i didn't do it once i just wet bun or just let it dry naturally so i didn't really post a picture so um yeah, I'm just looking on your hair. Instagram now. Where is the short hair? Come on. Oh, no. <laughs> actually, you can see a little bit. No, you can't really see it. No, no, it's like your hair slicked back. You can't. Oh, you yeah, can see that. I haven't. Right, there's a picture of the back of you in your blue swimsuit and it's short, but it's not like this. Like how I'm looking at I it can't. now, it looks lovely. It looks so nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's. Just oh, thought I'd go for a bit of a change. Uh, do you know what? I'm just looking at pictures that I haven't seen. It's, Instagram is so annoying. Like, Oh, the algorithm. I've just seen a picture of Margot with a bonnet, like a... A, a, a little... Like, she's turban. Got like a little, um, turban on. <laughs> that is the cutest thing ever. Oh, my gosh. I've just Isn't seen it. Isn't it weird? Bear in mind, we would interact with each other's posts all the time. Oh, well, I want to see your posts more than anybody else. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I know. And, and, the, and you and Greg on the swing in your red swimsuit. Like, I've just seen that. Oh, such cute pictures. Um, but yeah, I feel like I haven't seen you for ages. Also, I'm home Sunday and I think I'm just going to drive yeah. over Monday. I might just leave Paul and the kids at home and come with Edward because I really, really want to see Margot. Last time you see Margot was when I took the kids to Disneyland and you was at mum's when I dropped Margot to mum. Yeah, but that was that was like a flying visit as well because... Yeah, uh, that you got been to the last you time. got to Mum's to drop Margot. Then I was leaving soon after. I really want to come over and see her. I know that it's going to be like I'll have to just dump the cases, jump in the car, and come because I really, really want to see her. It's been so long. Yeah, she's she's really um, she's so funny. Like she's grown on holiday. You know, like you think the sun makes them grow. Oh, can we talk about Edward? When you that post you put out saying he might be blonde. I think Edward's blonde. I think blonde. he's going to be fairer. He's, I know that we're on holiday and he's in the sun a lot and it does light in your hair, but he's so fair. And that didn't really happen to Paul and Rosie on holidays when they were little. More Rosie than Paul, but he's fully got, like, blonde hair. Like, when you look at the little I strands, can, it's blonde. He's going to look so cute if he's, all his hair comes through blonde. <laughs> Honestly, it's the cutest thing ever. I'm going to send is. you some more pictures of him at breakfast this morning. And he's got a little suntan, like a tiny little suntan. Oh. And he looks really cute. And his eczema's just been amazing. I know we spoke about it last week, but even yeah, since but... last week, it's even got better. There's a few little, like, like um, little tiny, teeny tiny little patches on his on the back of his arms, but it just it looks brilliant. Oh, it looks so good. That's amazing. And again, so on sound, our isn't it? on our Instagram for anyone that's listening with children with eczema or any skin conditions, it was a lady that I met out here. Her name's Catherine, and we posted it on our Instagram. So if you want to go to our page for reference, she, she's on there. But I do think you know the sun has just been amazing. Vitamin D, the sunshine every day has just helped it so much. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's he's still not walking fully, but he's like he's like a drunk little old man. So like he's like so he walks and he's like whoa, and he done this like a whole spin the other day before he fell on his bum. That's it was really so funny. funny. And the kids are finding it hilarious that he's really trying. I to I bet walk. they are. 
like wobbling around. Does he like the sand? Does he, he love sand? He yet? loves the sand. He wants to eat oh, the sand. Oh, that's really good. But I have to keep. He watching. wants to eat the sand. He does. He's, <laughs> he's that baby. Paul and Rosie didn't do this, but he's that baby that literally puts the whole hand in the mouth of sand. And I'm having to get like a bottle of no. water, like an, or a cup, like that, that sounds like a full glass of water, and like swoosh it in his face to try and get it out because and he's like, <laughs> oh my god, yeah. isn't it funny? Like I do think third baby like so obviously i know margot's still only a baby baby but they they kind of just like slot in like they seem probably more chilled like you know like arthur wouldn't even walk on the sand nelly yeah. hated the sand but like probably like similar to poor rosie when they were babies but third one you could just chuck them on the sand they're eating it they don't care <laughs> i sat him on a towel the other day and he had cut up watermelon and i can't think this other little biscuit snack and then like toys so i put toys snacks on the in the shade on the sand on a towel and obviously he was reaching over putting sand on in the end he was just like watermelon all over him every piece of watermelon that he was eating was like sugar coated in sand you know like if you dipped it yeah in, eating it and i was like staring at him and i was thinking you're happy you're not even crying yeah i was like i'm just getting paul was <laughs> like oh. sand doesn't hurt you paul's like what a steak <laughs> come on quick like what what like what's going on here and i was like paul actually he's not even crying let's just leave him yeah just a bit of sand. just leave him while they're happy exactly I was like, and also it makes them not as um fuss, sensitive sen- and fussy over things i think, I think so. it's good to like if they're happy is like, I think it's like a natural instinct, isn't it, for us as, like, parents to be like, oh, no, like, they can't, like, obviously certain things, but a bit of sand, you're yeah, all right. it doesn't really <laughs> matter. And he's like, um, at breakfast, he's like, right, here we go. It's like a marathon at breakfast. So I put on his bib, so I've, he's got, like, this sleeved bib because he makes such a I've mess. I've seen that on your stories. Yeah, it's, I know it's a bit much, but it's the only They're thing. They're brilliant. And he goes in. I have to get like five different plates of all different things. And he's absolutely no lovely. Way. But you know what he's really loving, which probably isn't the best. But right at the end, when he's finished all of his fruit and all these bits and bowls, I give him like a, it's like a, um, what they called? Hash brown. You know, like on holidays, you get the oh, hash browns. Yeah. Oh, I he, bet he lo- loves that. He loves it. And he goes to town on it. But it's funny, I say to Paul, gosh, <laughs> look at the mess. And like, you know, it's quite a shiny new breakfast hall because it's obviously a new hotel. And every time we leave breakfast, I'm sort of trying to like gather a bit of food together. But they always say, don't worry, yeah. don't worry. But it's a mess. But you know, it's that, I can imagine. It's that age. But that's, that, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, it is that age and you can't, there's nothing, you've just got to let them enjoy it and indulge. We was laughing when we was away, like, me and mum were saying, why the free course breakfast every morning? Like, I don't every know if morning. you've been doing this, but... Yeah, of course. I've probably, I've literally, I've probably put on about half a stone since I've, like, I, yeah. like, I need to de-bloat. I'm on, like, a health kick now, this, for this, well, until we go to Paris. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, me and mum was like, is it necessary to have, like, like... Uh, every morning I have a tomato and onion omelette, then like a little bit of toast, then some fruit, and then of course I've got the cheek to have a croissant before I leave. You know, like why? It's not why do we, but then it is that's it's, what holidays are about. Isn't I've had it, a I chocolate suppose. croissant every single day. I think I said it before. Like every day I've had chocolate croissant. I've had beans. They do these really lovely little chicken sausages out here. They're like delicious. Oh, they're so I Moorish. Love the chicken and they're so small. <laughs> they're like the size of this little pencil. Look, but they're just delicious. And I've yeah. been having them. I've been having um like fruit juice. Two coffees, you know, it's just, it's just like, and then you walk out and you're like, oh, I could have a little snooze. <laughs> yeah, can. and then before you know it, it's lunchtime. Yeah, you start like, thinking, what can mm. we have for lunch? I'm thinking that right now, actually. Yeah. It's just time out here now. It's two o'clock in the afternoon and we haven't had lunch, so I've done quite well, to be honest. But as soon as we oh, finish this, good, I'll probably yeah. go down and get some sort of chips with... I don't know, um, club sandwich or what something. What have you been eating for lunch out there? Well, you know, they've got a really great part. So, like, around the pool, just off the off the pool, they've got this, like, like big lunch area, and you've got, like, little kind of, like, it's almost like a food market, but not. It's oh, like wow. they've got, like, kebabs, and they've got pizza, burgers, um, like, this Greek, um, and they've got, like, guacamole. But it's all in, like, this little cafeteria, like, um, cafeteria, uh, cafeteria. But it... Oh, wow. I'm, I'm not describing it the best, but it's actually like really lovely. No, but I like, can the imagine way it's lovely. The way they've done it, and then would really you lovely. do you get your food and take it away, or you sit in there? No, you sit. You sit. They've got all lovely like um, like ch- tables and chairs. You sit and eat, or you can order to the. There's a pool 
There's a beach menu if you go through at the beach. There's a pool menu. They've also got like a nobu on the beach here, which is lovely. But obviously, it's like sushi. And, you know, the, the the usual nobu menu. There's loads of options. But most days we've been going there because if Paul wants a burger and Rosie wants pizza, it's just nice. You can order what you want. Oh got, yeah, it's easy. And they've got like an ice cream van, and you can get ice cream. They've got like this big, massive row of slushies, like every flavour you can think of, and you get like oh, I see a picture of that. Yeah, it's it's pre- to be fair, it's a bit sickly. I don't really like things like that. And the kids had it one day. No. No, I don't. And they didn't go back for it because I think they were really sweet. It was a bit much. Yeah, um, a bit much. But yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of food options. But we've been we've been eating quite a bit to be honest. I mean, it's you know, it's what you do, isn't it? I guess. It's what holidays are about? Yeah. Like even me and Mum was. I, I text Mum yesterday. I think it was about UK time, maybe like I don't know, nine o'clock in the morning. We was five hours in front. I text Mum saying. Oh, we'd be thinking about what cocktail we're going to have right now. <laughs> That's it. I've had a few cocktails as well. They've got this really nice one around the pool, and it's got like I think it's got Sprite in it. I don't know, but it's like and, and fruit, and it's really f- like fresh. Had a few of them, but mm. and a few G and Ts. I've avoided wine. I think I had one rosé. I think the other day, but I'm, I'm avoiding wine because obviously you know that I get really sick if I drink too much wine so that's been good so I've actually been quite good with the alcohol and it's hard when you've got the three kids you know it's you can't really get drunk so it's just sort of like having a few yeah. and then no you know, not at all you just can't you have a few and then you get tired then that's you just... it you get tired then you want to go to bed no exactly <laughs> um then you but... want to go to bed and you can't and you're like oh <laughs> I know that's it but um what was I? What was I going to? I was about to say something. I can't remember what it was. Oh, so when we was away, you might have seen. You might have seen this on our Instagram. We swam with sharks. <gasps> wow, I saw that. How amazing! So, did the kids love it? It was. It was amazing. Like me and Mum, after we was like a bit in shock mode. We couldn't believe that they done it and that we done it. You know, like it was actually. It it like it was amazing. So we we went out on a boat. Um, Arthur really wanted to do it. Like we'd seen the excursion, like on the island, and Arthur really wanted to do it. And Nelly was like, "There's no way I'm doing it, mummy." And I was thinking, oh, "I don't know if I really want to do it, actually." But I was like, "Well, let's all just go on the boat. Let's do it anyway." We got out there on the boat for like ten minutes. They stopped the boat, and then they're like, "Right, they're here, right?" And they oh, literally, oh my gosh. when I mean, all come swimming around the boat. It was like unbelievable and then the guide went come on get your, get all your equipment on and just get in and the kids they just done it like it wow. we couldn't believe it you know like that's amazing we, we all got in obviously because i thought yeah. right if they're willing to do it i cannot you show can't, the fear. yeah you I've have to do it in. i've got to do it so we just got in and it was a bit like don't get me wrong it was a little bit eerie there was it was eerie because there was loads at one point at one point one of the fins brushed my legs like, oh. they were coming from all angles, like we was like in the sea, and they were coming up from all. So they're called nurse sharks, right? Which, listen, a shark's a shark, right? You don't know, you don't know what they could do if they could sound. But they say that they're like quite um, chilled sharks, but they're still sharks, of course. And they were huge. One of them was like much bigger than Greg. They, some of them were huge. No, Whoa. honestly, it was like... Did you, have you got I, any, you like, underwater it. footage of this? No, so you won't believe it, right? We just assumed, because we'd spoken to a couple the day before that had done it, and they said, oh, my God, they get all the GoPro footage for you, they have a photographer. So when we got on the... When we got... Like, was about to get off into the shark, like, with the sharks, I said to the guy, oh, have you got the GoPros and stuff? He was like, no, we haven't got them. I was like, <gasps> are you oh, kidding? I couldn't so believe annoying. it. They didn't have any of the. They didn't have any GoPro, so we didn't get. And I'm assuming and you wasn't filming. Was well, you not filming at the time? We wasn't filming by then. We like the film crew had gone. Oh my god! I literally, you know, well, when look, you decide, you've you got the memory, and I, I know there's pictures of exactly. the shark, so you know. But that's that's incredible, and the fact the kids but, done it as well, it's just amazing. I couldn't believe it. I was, but yeah, the, that you, was, but I feel like I've done it once. I don't know if I would do it again. Well, you've done it once. You don't need to do it again, do you? Speaking of being adventurous, they've got a zip line out here. So similar to how we done oh. ours that time on the Mummy Diaries, where you lay flat. You know, but it's huge. Oh, so apparently, no way. it goes up from one of the, these buildings across. Excuse me, across the whole of the marina. And I'm up for it. I said, "Should we do no. it?" No. Paul's like, "No, I'm all right, thanks." And I was saying because obviously, Mum's 
friend Sarah lives out here and I was saying to Sarah, come on, let's do it. But then Sarah's like, no, I couldn't do it. But Connie said, Sarah's daughter, she was like, oh, I'll, I'll, uh, we, oh, I'll Connie do it Connie would you. do it. She would do it. But I don't know if we're going to get around to doing it now because it's like a bit oh of an excursion. Oh my God, you have to do it. I would, but I, I, I said, look, let's do it. But I think I might do it when I come back because we've got a few days left and it's a little bit of an excursion. It's not, but do you know what I mean? It's a bit, but I was definitely up for it. Being, being Takes a few hours out of the day. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, I love a bit of thrill seeking, but um, maybe next time. But it looked really cool. Like you zip line across the whole of the marina, um, like amongst the buildings. <laughs> I'd love to see you zip line. <laughs> Woohoo! How times have changed in Dubai. I know. <laughs> so I would quite like to do that, but um, yeah. This is quite funny, actually. So Paul had to go to yeah. the mall early, uh, earlier to get something for po- little Paul for his um, Nintendo Switch. I said to Paul, I, basically, I've only got three swimsuits with me. And I know it sounds silly, but I, do you know when you're just sort of done with the same ones and like they're not been the yeah. most comfortable? I was waiting on a package of new swimwear that I'd ordered because none of my swimwear fits me. I had to get a size up and none of it come before I came out here. And I was like, this is just a nightmare. Anyway, so... I've been surviving on these like two slash three swimsuits because the third one's really small. Um, so Paul went to the mall and I was like, oh, can you get me a couple of swimsuits? When also you need to get me a darker foundation because like a, a, a light coverage. I went because I, I don't know what I did, but I didn't bring any of my dark foundations with me. So do you know like when your makeup's too light for your skin yeah. when you've got a tan? So Paul's like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I went, look, just go go in Sephora, go straight to any makeup counter and just ask the lady to match little Paul's skin <laughs> for, for my skin. That is hilarious. For the foundation. <laughs> Paul's like, what am I doing? And he called me after and it was funny because he ended up finding me a foundation and then he was saying to the lady, can you like match it to like my son's hand? It's, he was like, it's, it's, it's for my, like, my partner, but she's not here. Anyway, and I'm just looking it over there. It looks like it's quite a good match. It's, I've just, it's just caught my Which, eye line. Like, they what it. foundation did he get you? I don't know, one sec. Let's have a look at no. Chanel. The good stuff. Oh, nice. Um, uh, water fresh complexion touch B60. I hope it's not too brown. Little Paul is so brown. Honestly, he's... I bet oh, this is going to be so light. I mean, it looks lovely, but it looks super... I mean, light. I want... Yeah, oh, no, I wanted a light... Oh, found... like as in coverage. I wanted a light foundation, but I think this is like next level light. Let's have a look. Well, I think water base gives it away. <laughs> Watery. Oh, what actually, about, it's did quite... Did you get your... Did you get... Yeah, it's all, I'm just sorry. I'm just trying it out of my hand now. It actually looks... Did he get you the costumes? And he got me two costumes. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. One sec. It's really funny because he's never done this before. Have you not seen them? I can't hear you. Right, I'd is, actually love to do so that. Funny. We're doing an unboxing. I, oh, you probably can't hear me. Yeah, go on. I can hear you now. I would love to send Greg out and say to him, buy me a full outfit and see what he'd come back with. Probably come back with a legging, leggings and a sweatshirt. Let's do... Yeah, because that's all we wear. Let's do a... Um, uh, let's do that and we can we can unbox it on the... Yeah, we um, should. Yeah, we should. Podcast. Then we can reveal... You know, it's a bit like... Um, What's that wedding? Is it called Don't Tell the Bride? Oh, my gosh, when yeah, the when they choose husband. a dress. <laughs> um, one minute, I've got two swimsuits. Oh, oh gosh, they're both, both dark. Right, I've got this one. That looks quite nice. Navy, safe. Is that black? Oh, no, navy. It's, it's like, no, nice. is it navy? It's quite safe. He's gone very safe. And this one is like a Hunza material. You know, like that. Not too oh, bad. that's nice. He done all right, but he's gone I, very I'm safe. So safe, not one print. But anyway, that's fine. I'm grateful because I'm running out of options here. Anyway, that's my unboxing done. Also, ma'am, was there loads of people speculating that you you got engaged? Yes. Are you engaged? Are you not telling me something? Can I just say this happens <laughs> every time, right? So if you take a mirror selfie with your, the yeah. ring on your right finger, the mirror flips the picture. So then people oh, think yeah, it's, so it's your left it. finger. I was like, not again. And obviously John, my agent, emailed me straight away. was like, oh, I've had an email from, I can't remember one of the press articles, uh, journalists. And I was like, oh, it's so annoying. Then you don't have to explain yourself. I, I, this has happened to me like three times now. And it's because the mirror has flipped the picture. And then people think that it's the thing, uh, ring on my left finger. And it's just j- dress jewellery. It's like these yeah. two diamonds from this, like, it's, you know, it's just like, you know, like um, dressing up jewellery. It's not like even, 
Oh, and I was like, of course, I was like, why again? But I thought, I'm not even going to explain myself. I'm not engaged. And I wouldn't just post it like that as well. You know, if I was actually engaged, I'd no, like to probably like say... No, subtly him. Yeah, I'd like to say, oh, I'm engaged. Um, but anyway, I'm not. And it's the, the, the mirror flip thing. But what I'm going to have to do, if ever I get a mirror selfie, I'm going to have to flip the picture back the other way because it causes a lot of speculation, unnecessary speculation. <laughs> um Come on, Paul, we're still waiting. We need another wedding to plan. We do. <laughs> another And hens and dresses and... And a hen. Of, yeah. <laughs> um, right, okay, so dilemmas. I'll go in for one. Okay, so I'm pregnant okay. and excited to tell my family at 12 weeks. My partner's family are so difficult and have often run their mouth telling people private things about us, including our wedding invitation, pictures of us on the wedding day before we shared anything ourselves. I don't want to tell them about the baby until uh, I've told all of my family and friends so I can't be taken, so it can't be taken away from me. But my partner really wants to tell them sooner as he thinks they'll be put out, they'll be put out to no last. Um, what should I do? Our family don't live near us. I've got visions of his mum putting it on Facebook before my siblings even know. Yes, she really is like that. Well, I just think you need to... If that's how they are, then maybe, yeah, tell them last without them knowing that they, they're they being told yeah. last. The thing is, it's such special news to share with your family and friends. And if if there's the slightest risk of... That happening it going on just, Facebook. I just, I just think tell tell all your family and friends, and then just tell them last. But just like make out as if they're not last to know. Or you like could they do, could just say we're telling everyone this week. Or you could host a little like breakfast or lunch at your house. Invite all the people that are the most important that need to know together at the same time, and do like a little bit of an announcement. <laughs> Yeah. I know that's quite daunting, but like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Just like, we've got something to tell you all. And that all they can all open up like a little card each saying, congratulations, you're going to be a nan or an auntie or, you know. And then that way, no one can be offended because they're all being told at the same day. Maybe. Very true. That's a really good idea, actually. Right, the next one's really funny. Read it because I've got a similar story to tell. <laughs> my partner thinks <laughs> sorry I'm laughing as well because I can relate my partner thinks it's wrong for me to go to a magic might night as I don't let him go to the, to a strip club <laughs> do you agree right so we're actually all going to magic might next month aren't we <laughs> we're going to the yes. we're going to the live magic mic show in London and this is so funny because we have this shared calendar and anything we put in the calendar it alerts like Paul gets an alert on his phone like a text message almost and then recently when we'd arranged to do magic mic it went didding his phone and he obviously came up magic mic <laughs> 8 p.m. or whatever it is, and he looked up at me and he went seriously, and I went. I looked back at him and I went seriously, <laughs> and that was it. End of conversation. You know what? It's so funny because I said to Greg the other day when we was going through, we don't have a shared calendar. Greg's like really old fashioned; like he calls me a thousand times a day to ask what's going on. Yeah. Anyway, so. I, I said to Greg, I was going for my calendar, I was telling him about like a few things like Luana, and I said, oh, and I've got Magic Mike on this. But as I said Magic Mike, you I had the biggest nervous yeah. grin and started laughing. He went, hmm, hmm, hmm. You know, like really like, hmm, hmm, oh, so it's all right for you. And he was like basically trying to say, oh, it's all right for you to go to that sort of thing, but, you know, what, like, you but, know, very different, isn't it? But I went, it's such a different thing, it's though. It's so to different. Club. Like, it's so different. Maybe we're being like, biased. You can't even compare it. Honestly, no, I personally we're not. don't think you can we're not. compare. We're not, are we? It's like a lot of men go to the strip club and it's like, it could be like a little bit, like, CD, or they're like wanting to get your pain like, for private know, dances like, and it being a little bit more than that yeah like, this but is actually, pure magic might it's just fun fun and we went in 100% vegas 100 percent fun fun <laughs> honestly and we went in vegas didn't we chippendales which i think is going to be a similar a similar thing and it's just loads of girls and women either on stag sorry hen do's birthday nights out all kind of giggling and laughing just watching fit men dancing in thongs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's harmless. Who was it that told me something really funny about Magic Mike? Like, when, you know, like they call some people up to the, the dance. Oh, we're like, definitely going to gonna get mum up there stage. because mum's coming Million with us. Percent. We have to get mum up. I think, that, I'm sure someone told me something like they whisper to you beforehand, like, 
are you okay with this? Because they have to, because consent. obviously, you know, like, consent, yeah. And um, they were saying to me, like, it was just so funny. Mum like, would be like, like okay yes, I am fine Hell with yeah, this. bring it on, <laughs> bring it on. That's funny. Um, that's really funny. Just enjoy it. Sorry, back, but, to, back um, to the question. Enjoy your magic night out. Sorry, it's yeah. it's totally different to, to a man going to a strip club, I personally think, if your man is that way inclined, because it might be that... He has a stag do come up and it's like, oh, we've got to go to the strip club and we're abroad and it's all a bit funny. I think that's okay, but not... Isn't it such a cliche? Yeah. It's, yeah. I just think it's so different and it's just a girl's drunk night out and we're going to, you're going to giggle and laugh. I think it's different, personally. Um, Completely. Okay, so I'm 46 and feel like uh, longer hair is only for younger women. What do you think? And should I embrace the natural grey? Yeah, do you know what? I think yes. I think embracing the natural grey is so popular this day and age, probably more than maybe when it used to. And I actually think grey hair is quite nice. And I'm not just saying it because Paul's completely, almost completely grey, but I do think no, it, I, I agree. Think it's I nice. Think I do, and and also I think as a lady as well, you know, like when some ladies go grey, and I think it looks so lovely. You know. You could almost put a toner on it mm. to brighten it up. You know, like just to brighten up the grain and have like a really cool haircut. But also, if you think of Gaynor, who's my mother-in-law, she's fully grey and has been for years. Her hair mm. looks great. I think it's like quite, quite um, like showstopper. Do you know, like when someone's got grey yeah. hair, like I think if you can Completely. style it right, I think it actually looks really nice. And also going back to the, I think longer hair's for younger girls. I do get that. Like, I think, look... Everyone is different, and I think you're going to style your hair how you want it to be. But super long hair, I do I do think, is more yeah. for the younger generation. Like, I do get that. Mm. But then also, you know, just just do whatever you want to do. I think it doesn't really matter. Exactly. This. How, whatever makes you feel exactly. comfortable and confident, who cares? Exactly that, sister. Right, okay, so ask us anything. Um... I'll go for this one. On the last episode, you read out a message from a woman who had had her wedding on Don't Tell the Bride. Oh, we mentioned that earlier. If Greg and Paul were on that show, what kind of wedding do you think they would plan? I think Paul, I know exactly what Paul would do. Paul would plan a wedding, I think, on the beach with about 15 people and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Genuinely, <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> Immediate family, couple of witnesses, done. <laughs> Greg, well, Greg... Greg and I planned our wedding together and Greg, he, remember how busy and involved he was? Mm. Oh, he was like, that was, yeah. But anyway, um, he would plan something very similar to what we had, like loads of people, more deals, a bit of a party. Yeah. Um, yeah, similar to what we had. Yeah. I think, I think that's what Paul, um, and I also, I think I know what kind of dress, if he had to choose the dress as well, I think I know what Paul would go for as well, I think. It's very like classic. Oh, I don't know. Paul. I don't know what Greg would go Greg's, for. Paul's rather quite like traditional. Like I think I have an idea of what he would choose. Um, okay, so next question: Have you ever been starstruck? Um, I'm trying to think, have I? Years and years mm. and years ago, when we first started out, I remember we went to like one of the first like in in. NTA's award is it NTA? Yeah, NTA awards or something like yeah. that. And I always remember Jeremy Carl. <laughs> and I see him, and when he was like at the height, and Jeremy he was like he's yeah, the, he showed in the yeah, we used to love. And uh, I was like, I have to get a selfie with Jeremy Carl, and I got a selfie with him. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> No, I, I remember that actually That's do you remember and I had the picture because I used to print off all my pictures <laughs> and post put them in, all around my room and I remember it, Jeremy Carl was in, in, in my room and then and then you posted it saying hashtag put something on the end of it <laughs> no I didn't <laughs> that was his, no you didn't be that, 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 that was his favourite saying you know what <laughs> you should put something on the end of it whenever they'd have like kids and <laughs> People like get money oh, off them. Oh, don't. That was, yeah. And do you remember when we were younger with Wendy, we used to watch um, Jerry Springer? Like, Jerry Springer. Kind of, Jerry, you know, Jerry, Jerry. We used to love we that. We used to love that, didn't we? Them shows are great. They don't have anything like that anymore, do they? Oh, my God. We should pitch this. This could be a new um, format for me and you. Yes. Could you? <laughs> to have one of these kind of shows. <laughs> we should. Oh, don't. Could you imagine? <laughs> they were so good. What would, that, what would our chant be? 
Sam and Bill. Sam and Bill. <laughs> <laughs> It'd have to be something with their names in it. Oh. Um, Do you remember they used to like storm yeah. off and like sit out the back and they'd have their mic and the security would no, like walk behind them. Security, security would come. Would security. Security. The security yeah. would always get it, wouldn't they? Anyway, um, last ask us anything. What daily products do you use? Shampoo, slash conditioner, shower gel, toothpaste, etc. Um, well, shampoo and conditioner, I actually use the red L'Oreal LV colour one. Yeah, you've so used that for red. years, haven't you? I've used it for a long time. I do like yeah, that, but that it's one. very fragrant. Like, I feel like you can smell it all day. Yeah, you can. <laughs> you and if, your fragrance. If I come to you, your mum's and wash my hair with your shampoo, I feel like I can smell it in my hair all day. I like my hair to smell <laughs> nice, but I don't like it too fragrant, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, toothpaste I use Crest whitening oh it's so bad for you um, I knew you was going to say that <laughs> why is it bad why why well I use um, oh, why do I forget the oh, name natural organic it's zero actually, fluoride well, it's actually really nice I should get shares in this toothpaste but is it minty I use it's called Aloe dent. It's actually oh, really nice. Of course it is. No, because it's not aloe vera. Not aloe vera. Aloe dent. Yeah, aloe dent. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> fl- fluoride free. So that's why I was saying about the crest. I knew but, you was say that. but it's actually mint flavour. So it's still minty, really minty. And I just think that everyone should um, swap over to it. Let me have a look. There's hardly any ingredients in it. It's here we go. Look, help soothe gums. Tea tree oil. So it's all natural. Anti- so tea tree oh. is a natural antiseptic. Um, it's got COQ10, helps gums healthy. Peppermint and menthol, natural flavouring. Um, but I just, yeah, I've been using this for a couple of years now. Mum always says, you remind me so much mm. of Auntie Samantha. Look, cool minty freshness. Mm. Use it, guys. Lovely. Um, and my ha- hair shampoo and conditioner, I quite like the Kerastase. I can't think what, I don't know how you pronounce it either. So it's probably wrong. Oh, yeah. No, and I think I it's called Bain Satin. B-A-I-N or Bain Satin. I don't know how you would pronounce it. I use that. But um, um, oh, I use a natural deodorant, which I just have loved now. I think I'm just completely <laughs> away from aerosol and I use natural deodorant. I use that <laughs> wild one and I actually think it's really nice. Is it roll on? Yes, roll on. And I really like it. Um, but yeah, okay. I think that's what we've got time for. I've got Paul. Yes. Paul just texted me saying, "Are you coming?" Because I'm literally now going to have to run, run around oh. the wall park. Wish me luck. Go and have fun on the slide. Yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> um, and I will. We'll see you all next week, guys. And Billy, I, I will see you hopefully on Monday when I'm back. Yes, definitely. Make sure you do okay. come over. I'd love Perfect. to see you. Anyway. Okay. Love you guys. Love you. Bye. Bye.